Hello, welcome to World Plum Day for 2021. I believe it's 2021. Oh yes, I am Kim Nguyen. I am a uh, still unreformed planista. I've been a planista for 18 years this year. Um, I got involved with Plone when I was working at a university at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh and I needed to build a website for people who could log into a site and retrieve content that was otherwise not available to the public. And this website needed to be uh, maintained by teachers. So not programmers, certainly not people who are expected to know or be comfortable with editing HTML or running servers or anything like that. So. Long story short, I got involved because I picked Plone out of a, a number of solutions that were available at the time. This was in 2003, and it was so successful. The project was so successful that I was able to convince the entire university to switch over to using Plone. And over the next few years, we built about 350 websites using Plone, a, a variety of public sites for colleges, the, the main campus, departments, programs, intranets, workflow applications. It was it was really quite amazing what we were able to do with this one piece of software. Um, so today, what I'd like to talk to you about is some of the ways that nonprofit organizations um, who usually don't have a lot of money uh, can use Plone in a way that allows them to not only present a complementary public face to the world, but also put out news items, put out calendar events of things they might be organizing. So fundraisers or meetings, board minutes, things like that. As you can imagine, the Plone Foundation uses Plone. Uh, so Plone.org has all, all of those elements. Um, and so nonprofits, what are the other things that differentiate nonprofits from say corporations? Um, in addition to just not usually having a whole bunch of money to throw at a problem, um, nonprofits are usually uh, run by volunteers. And one of the things about volunteers is they can come and they can go. Uh, one of the most important things, as you can imagine, in running any long lived website is the ability to make it easy for new people to, who are joining the organization to understand how to use some piece of software or some system that they have to that the organization wants to continue using institutionally. And so the ease of use is something that is really critical for volunteers. And, and so is the simplicity of managing the software. Uh, you really don't want to bring a new volunteer into a, um, a, a local city club or a council or a small charity and say, oh, and by the way, you need to log into a Linode uh, you have to use SSH, you have to generate your public and private key pair, and you have to SSH into the machine, and you have to run this thing on the command line. You really don't want that. So Plone really hits um, many of those points. I mean, primarily, it's inexpensive. It's uh, basically free as in beer. And of course, it's really easy to use. So once somebody sets up your Plone site, all you have to do is just log in, there's a login panel, you can log in, and then suddenly you can start editing the parts of the site that you're supposed to edit. And you can publish content, and it's really as easy as clicking a button and saying publish. Um, so Plone is really a wonderful piece of software, especially for nonprofits. Um, so the example I'm going to talk to you about today in particular is this robotics team that I'm involved with. Um, our two sons are involved in this team, have been on this team, and um, I got sucked into doing this because I know some people in town who, uh, I know people in town who can get things done for you. Well, they actually uh, knew that I could do websites, uh, and I stupidly volunteered to do stuff like this. So this, what you're seeing here today, I hope, is the website as it looked a few years ago. And um, it doesn't look bad, actually. So Wave Robotics is the team name. And uh, if I just scroll down a little bit, you can see eh, it looks OK. Yeah, it looks fine. Has a little bit of news and some images there and some photos and a little bit of news slapped on the front page. So it looks fine. Um, so 
what are some of the downsides of this particular website? So um, uh, even though I say I kind of stupidly volunteer to do things for people, I, I try not to do something that doesn't really need my help. Um, this particular website, as you can see, if I shrink the browser window, does not act the way you'd expect it to act. Certainly, it does not look very good on a mobile device or phone or a tablet. Um, so that was one of the challenges that they were aware of. But then probably more importantly, which you can't see behind the scenes here, is that if you look at, there's quite a bit of content on this site. It's, it's not a university website, but there's a bit of history here. And there's a lot of things under menu items. And there were definitely forms that the team wanted parents and others to be able to access that, and they wanted them to be behind a password. So again, the idea of somebody needs to log in and you need to be able to authorize different kinds of users to do different kinds of things. It seems like it's a perennial thing or it should be a perennial thing for a website, even though I believe <clears throat> competing content management, well, okay, I'll say loosely, content management systems, uh, competing content management systems don't really do this very well. But Plone, oh my gosh, Plone does this without even thinking. So that whole role and authentication piece is such a nice part of Plone core um, and more on that in a second. So the biggest challenge that the team had is there are these adults who've been part of the team and who mentor the team, the students, and uh, they wanted to get students to help them maintain the content on this website. As it turns out, uh, when I happened to say to one of the lead mentors, hey, let me show you this Plone web content management system that I, I really like, and you can tell me if it's at all useful to you. And so I went to demo.plone.org, which I, I hope you're familiar with. You can log in as a manager, and then you can do a bunch of things. And the moment I went to the login page and I said, did you see that, by the way? Let me log out again. That was too quick. So when you log in to Plone, you can log in as a manager or editor in chief or an editor or any other kind of category of user or role that you'd like to create. And it's the moment I showed this person this login page and I explained the ability for us to manage who can do what on different parts of the site, she said, sold, I want this. Because the solution that they had, this thing, which is a proprietary content management system that comes with a calendaring and file management and photo management system just did not have that ability for them to say, hey, student, would you like to help us maintain the website? The only way they could do that is to was to give the student the same login power as the site owners, as the lead mentors, the adults who've been managing the team from year to year. So as you can imagine, the owners of the site, the lead mentors decided, we really don't want students being able to go in and see everything and possibly damage or delete things. And so they just did not involve students at all in the maintenance of the website content. So when she saw the login for Plone and heard that you can create users and you can assign them to different roles and groups and then give different groups or roles the ability to edit different parts of the site, she said, this is really what we need. So I, I got roped in. Well, I kind of did it to myself again. And so the end result was this Plone site, this Plone 5 site. Uh, it's actually Plone 5.2 running on Python 3. And it, it lets students log in. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So as part of the effort to uh, help the marketing uh, of this robotics team, we have a, a what we call a sub team for different parts of what the team does. And so there's a sub team that assembles a robot. There's a sub team that creates the CAD drawings. There's a sub team that manages designing and building of the electrical components. There's a driver, there's a pit crew. There's, so anyway, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different sub teams, but one of the sub teams is all about marketing. And so I wanted to help them get going on what are some of the things that you might want to do if you're responsible for marketing an organization, a nonprofit, or eventually if some of these students get jobs in the business world, they, they might end up in charge of marketing for their company. So uh, these marketing students 
were interested in learning what it is to create a news item and how to publish news items and what to put in a news item to make it appeal to someone who might not know enough about the team, but might be interested in learning because they'd like to become volunteers or they'd like to, if they're a student, they'd like to join the team or hey, if they had money and they wanted to help the team by sponsoring something like uh, helping to buy some equipment that the students need to assemble some tooling or uh, some of the materials used to build the robot, it'd be great to introduce people to what the team does. So some of the, some of the things that we ended up doing is allowing these students to log into their Plone site and then create news items like this one and edit the news items and then once we felt comfortable that they were com they were um, careful and they could word things appropriately, it felt good enough that we also gave them the ability to publish the content without needing uh, one of the mentors like me to review it. Although they still ask for us to review it, um, it's nice that we can allow students to log in to their Plone site. And then in the news item section or in the blog post section of the site, they have the ability to create content and review it and then publish it. So that level of authorization and um, group and role management is something that is has been part of Plone for since, well, since the beginning. And it's one of the obviously key differentiators between Plone and other content management systems out there. And I believe, uh, and I could be wrong, but I, I believe WordPress is still pretty much like that. Uh, once somebody can log into a, plone, a WordPress site, they pretty much have the run of the place and it may not be the thing that you want to do. It certainly makes it harder to feel comfortable with the delegation of content management and content editing, content publishing. So again, it's one of the big strengths of Plone that is in Plone Core. It's in the box. So a little bit more about this website. As you can see, I'll just give you a little bit of a tour. You can see at the top here, we've got um, in the portlets, we've got the Google Calendar, which is what the team uses. It's a shared calendar. We have news, a news portlet, pretty standard plone. I'm reminded of something that Dr. Evil says, pretty standard really. Blog posts, and then a navigation portlet that shows you what else is in the site. So these are different folders that you can then navigate to so you can look at the blogs. Pretty standard, really. Okay. All right. Zip it. Okay. I'm just going insane here. Um, so other parts of the site, uh, information about the programs that the team is involved with. So there's different levels of the robotics team here. Anyway, my job here isn't really to promote our team, although if you have a lot of spare money and you'd like to sponsor something with the team, I'm sure we'd be very pleased to put your name up in lights here on this page. Uh, so one of the other aspects of this site that are interesting, it's it's pretty basic Plone, Plone 5.2, as I said, and running on Python 3. It's running on a Linode that costs, I think in this case, $5 a month. Plus we have the backups turned on. <laughs> so that's another $2 a month. So we're looking at $70, $7 a month really to run this team's very important web presence. And it's the web address that we put on everything. You can see my cap it. I mean, actually, I think, where is it? Oh, darn it. There's no web address on my cap. Okay. Well, uh, it should be on my cap, but it's on other stuff. Um, so the website is really important and you can do things like you can play embedded videos. I don't think you can hear the sound because I didn't share it, but all of this stuff you just get out of the box with Plone. I, the only add-on that we have in here is, uh, I think it's easy form. So we can, we can create um, online forms that people can fill out. They're easy to, to create, they're easy to edit. Um, but I think in this, this team has, has used a lot of Google forms. Uh, so historically they haven't needed to use easy form. So pretty much this is your standard Plone out of the box. The theme, is something that I got from a Google Summer of Code um, project from a few years ago, and I'll show you that in a moment. It's uh, if you go to plone.org um, and then you go to the downloads, which you can get to from from here, from the more menu, uh, you'll see your standard plone download buttons. And of course, 
you should be aware, I hope you're aware that you can use Plone's Docker image to get Plone going really quickly on any laptop or any, you just run, if you have Docker, you can just launch a Plone Docker image uh, very, very easily. But you can, of course, download Plone. And then if you keep looking a little bit lower, you can see some of the, there were five uh, themes created by one of our Google Summer of Code students. And the one that I selected is called Future Imperfect, um, which you can see a screenshot of here. And so this really was something that was easy to install um, and just select in, in the Plone site. And that was pretty much it. Uh, you can see the theme also comes with this, I'm not sure what to call it. Uh, it's an additional navigational tool that uh, slides out from the side and shows you the structure of the site. So mm, now that I think about it, I probably didn't need the navigation portlet. But um, yeah, there's a couple of little quirks in the, in the theme. But uh, overall, hey, it's not bad for something that took just a few minutes to get going. Um, and the portlets are pretty standard. It's easy to share uh, Google Calendar. Google Calendar actually gives you a little embed code that you can insert into a static text portlet and then uh, display it in where in the column you'd like. Um, so what else can I tell you about this particular site? Once you log into a site, so I've, I've already logged in in this particular window, you get your standard toolbar, and then you can see, say, some of the contents. So if I go to the blog folder, no, it's not this one. There's actually two blog folders. OK, so we need to do a little bit more work. You can see all the different blog posts that the students have put together. And then if we look in the sharing tab, you can see that the marketing, there's, there's a little glitch here. You can't see the checkboxes. But the marketing students are authorized to add, edit, and well, and view obviously, but also review. So the, there are four checkboxes that should be here um, that are enabled. So the marketing students can have essentially free range in this folder, in this folder alone, we don't actually let them edit anything else um, on the site, but in this particular folder and in the news folder, they can. So the students are part of this group. And so it's easy enough to manage group membership. Um, standard plum, it's very nice. Um, OK, so that's fine and dandy. I think I've shown you that it's uh, somebody who's been doing Plone for 18 years can have an easy time of provisioning a Linode, installing, um, in this case, I usually use Ubuntu, and then downloading the Plone installer, and then running the installer, which is a command line tool, and then setting up Plone so it can run on the right ports and then setting up SSL certificates and setting up cloud front and front, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, maybe that's not something that your run of the mill charitable organization volunteer who's like a parent or who's maybe a business person, not a programmer, not somebody who's comfortable using uh, Linux, installing Linux, installing tools in Linux and so on would be happy to do. So. This problem is something that I feel is important to Plone to make it approachable. So Plone itself as a UI, terribly approachable. You know what to do. You get the right buttons and you click on them and it does things. And it's pretty easy to figure out what Plone does. The control panels are beautiful and easy to find. And you can do tons of things like these content rules. OK, but how do you set up your own Plone site? And back in December at the Plone conference, the 2020 Plone Conference that was held online by, by volunteers, but also I was going to say, OK, I'm not going to talk about that. But uh, we did this great online conference. And one of the talks I gave was about this concept I came up with for my talk, which I called Plone in a Box. Why do I call it Plone in a Box? Well, we talk about, in the Plone community, we talk about how Plone has all of these features in the box. They just come with it. And it's one of the great selling points of Plone. It makes it so easy to sell Plone. Um, you want something? Oh, it's probably in Plone Core. Uh, other competing <laughs> content management systems, <clears throat> you got to do everything through add-ons. I mean, you, and you got to sift through all the add-ons. You go, do I need this add-on? Is it that one or is it that one? And, and you know that those competing platforms have these terrible security problems because even if 
their core piece of software is well designed and is secure. You've got to pollute that core product with so many add-ons and they're all vulnerable. Eventually one of them has a vulnerability that allows somebody to come in and just take over the whole thing. And you really don't want that. Anyway, let's play nicely here. Plone doesn't have that problem, but, um, and so Plone is great. It's approachable in that respect. You know what you get, it's gonna be secure. Um, you don't have to worry about figuring out all the different add-ons that you, you need to put in to make it do something basic. Uh, obviously, there are lots of add-ons you can add to Plone. You can write your own. You can write your own integrations to other back-end systems, but you don't need to. If your standard use case is like that of a nonprofit or a charity or uh, a school or a, a, even a business or an intranet that you want to run, you can pretty much install Plone on a server and then use it the way it is out of the box. But as I was telling you, the ability for somebody to create a server well, nowadays we do everything in the cloud, right? Who's going to run uh, a website off the computer on their desktop? Well, maybe some people might, but you don't have to. And usually if you're serious about using, making your website visible or accessible to others and you want it pretty speedy, you probably don't want to do it from a home network. So you probably go to a number of cloud providers um, that would be Amazon AWS. It would be Linode or Rackspace or DigitalOcean. Uh, or if you're crazy, you might want to use Azure from <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> Erico. Uh, or you might be kind of weird and want to use Google Cloud Platform. Geez, I, I hope nobody's listening to this. Uh, so let's say you want to use AWS or Linode and, and DigitalOcean. Those are really nice tools. Well, you can use Plone in a Box. And so let me show you what Plone in a Box does. We have um, this GitHub repository, which is at uh, github.com slash collective slash plone in a box. And this is a very easy way for you to provision a server and have plone running on it in seriously in about five minutes. Uh, it's, it's actually less than five minutes if you use Amazon AWS. It's maybe 10 minutes if you use Linode. And once we get it working on DigitalOcean, I think it'll be on the order of five minutes. Five minutes to create a cloud machine and to have Plone ready running on it with a few add-ons that I think are useful, um, particularly productive, and have it running for you so that you can start adding content to it within a few minutes. So the instructions I've got here, actually I'll, uh, the markdown instructions here, I'll open, I open it up in, in this tab and you can see I've got full, we've got full instructions in here that talk about how you can, um, how you can set it up. And really the short and long of it is you get Plone, you get your virtual machine, you get Plone and you get these add-ons already installed, which are pretty easy to configure. Um, and so there are some things that Plone in a Box will not do. Um, it's Again, it's meant to get you up and running quickly. It's not meant to be a production-ready server, but you can make it production-ready if you can do the following things. They're not complex. Well, okay, I say that because I've done these before and I'm pretty comfortable with servers, but um, if you don't know how to do it yourself um, and, and you can't find help in the Plone forum, I'm sure that, uh, well, actually, I'm sure that if you ask in the Plone forum, people will help you. But eventually what I'd like to do, and uh, and I'm not the only one in the Plone community who like this, we would like to make it really easy for you to go from having your Plone in a box ready for you to play with and add content to and show your family and friends or your colleagues how they can do it, how they can join in and edit content easily with it too. But to go from there to making a production server, we'd like to have a very easy path for you to follow um, but more on that in a few minutes. So as I said, you could start off by, say, choosing Amazon AWS or Linode. And the first example I have described in here is if you were to use Amazon AWS. So I know you're going to ask me, how much does this cost? Well, for five easy payments of 49 no, it's, it's going to be inexpensive. Um, 
if you get something like the smallest Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instance, uh, it comes to under $10 a month, maybe $7 a month, something like that. So it's a little bit more expensive than Linode's cheapest plan, which is about $5 a month. But um, if you're familiar with AWS, it's easy. It's easier to use AWS. So essentially, you create an AWS account. And I've got a whole bunch of screenshots in here so you can follow along. You, you use the basic plan so you don't need to pay for it up front. And then, uh, well, let's just keep scrolling. You log into your AWS console. And then you essentially search for an image, which is called Plone in a Box. And you say you want to install that image. So this is pretty much, I'm just, well, uh, this is a, a sort of screen by screen play of everything you'd have to do, but it's not complicated. And literally you search for the thing called Plone in a Box and you click select. And once you go through a couple of next, next, next screens, which again, you can leave all the default values, you click uh, launch, review and launch. And then you wait about, well, three minutes. <laughs> and you have a plone site running at the end of it. So I'm gonna keep scrolling here. And then you can view your plone site. And there you go. Wow, it was even faster when I was talking to you now. So that's a Plone site running on Amazon AWS. That's a brand new Amazon EC2. EC2 is the Elastic Compute Cloud. Uh, that's the name. Uh, Amazon EC2 instance with Plone running, Plone 5.2, running on Python 3 with all of those add-ons that I showed you before. And you're off to the races. You can view your Plone site. You can log into it. You can start editing content on it. And it's running in the cloud. Um, that's on Am Amazon AWS. So on Linode, it's maybe a little bit simpler. It's going to cost you a fixed dollar amount per month. You know, Amazon AWS can charge you a little bit more depending on how much computing you use, how much CPU bandwidth, bandwidth and so on, disk space you use. Linode is a more predictable amount. It's pretty much what you pick. So if the cheapest plan is $5 a month. They call it a nanode, but it will run Plone just fine. Um, so you go to Linode. You create an account, and then you search for what they call a stack script. And you search for it by name. Again, it's going to be called Plone in a Box. And you can find it. Uh, where is it? Community stack scripts, and it's called Plone in a Box. And then you essentially say, create a Linode with this stack script. So this process takes a little bit longer, as I said, about well, probably less than 10 minutes. And it goes off and installs Plone 5.2 on Python 3. And then with all those add-ons that I showed you, same idea. Um, again, what I wanted to show you today is that if you're a nonprofit, you're a charity, you're a club, or you're a business, or you're a tinkerer, you're a, you want to run a, your own little intranet, you can set up a Plone site on a server in a, just a few minutes using Plone in a box. And that's really what I consider to be uh, Plone at scale for nonprofits. Next steps for Plone in a Box really are to make it even easier for someone uh, who doesn't necessarily have a Linode account or a DigitalOcean account or an Amazon AWS account. What I envision is for, say, Plone the community and Plone the foundation to agree to setting up Plone in a Box as a kind of software as a service. Let's say, let's talk about one of those hypothetically full-featured content management systems. Okay, I'm, I'm just being sarcastic about this. WordPress is great. It serves a, a very important use case. Um, it's really popular. It's not so secure, but it's really popular. Um, what can you do when you want to make a WordPress site? You go to WordPress, I don't know, is it WordPress.com? WordPress and you say, I want to make a WordPress site, you do a few clicks, you pay your $5 a month, and you get a WordPress site. You didn't have to provision a server. You didn't have to, you didn't have to create an AWS account. You didn't have to create a Linode account or a DigitalOcean account. You just went to WordPress.com, you create an account, and then you click through a few options. You pick a theme, and then presto, you have a site at a domain name that is something.wordpress.com. 
And if you want to pay a little bit more, then you can change what that uh, domain name is so you can make it your own. So if you've got uh, I'm Joe Schmo.com, you can say I'm Joe Schmo.com actually points to this new WordPress site that I created with a few clicks. That really is what I see as the, the future vision for Plone in a Box. I'd love for it to, to be something that we can create and run smoothly. We've had in the past um, another service. Good Lord. Oh, yes, Plowed. <laughs> Plone in the cloud uh, that was created by Enfold Systems, and it seemed really promising. It seemed like a really good idea, but it it hasn't lasted, unfortunately. I'm not sure exactly what the story was behind its shutdown, but um, that wasn't run by the Plone community. That was run by Enfold. I think the Plone community would probably be able to make something like this, like Plone in a Box as a service work. Um, it might not make a lot of money, but it sure would be nice when people are thinking about using Plone, we already have many ways that somebody who's com comfortable with Docker or, um, or, or Plone in a box, the way it stands with creating an account in a cloud provider where they can create their own Plone sites. But um, I would like to be able for us to reach the kinds of really non-technical audience that is going to need a user interface and a process that is much easier um, and does not require technical knowledge. And I'd like that to happen. And um, I hope we can make that happen. So I hope you enjoyed my presentation today. And I hope you're going to enjoy all the rest of the World Plone Day content. Plone is a really wonderful community. I, I don't want to tear up talking about it. I know it's maybe a little, little over dramatic, but it's been a wonderful group of people uh, over the years, such smart, welcoming, friendly, helpful people, very smart, technical people. Um, it's a great family to join, and uh, I've, I've, it's changed my life. It's changed my career. It's allowed me to travel to places and see great people and meet great people um, I would never have been able to meet without it. So I hope you'll consider joining Plone and joining us and then having a beer with us or a wine or an Aperol spritz or, say, a Negroni someplace exotic. Uh, so thank you very much.